Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of the Self Helpless Podcast. I'm Delaney Fisher, and today we have a very, very special guest, my husband Cam, and we're here to answer your questions that you had about our relationship, our marriage. Uh, We answered questions, everything from what annoys us about each other to how we met, um, what our biggest fight was, best vacation, what we're excited about for the future, how we split finances, all kinds of stuff. Um, I popped in uh, to the Self Helpless Instagram. You guys submitted questions. And I'm going to probably be doing this a little bit more often for certain episodes. So, you know, keep an eye out if you want to submit questions that might get answered on the show. All right, everybody. Uh, Here is my podcast episode with my husband. Oh my gosh. Yeah, babe. Sporting the helpster <laughs> shirt. Um, you guys, my wonderful guest today is my husband. Always so hard to find, so hard to book. Truly a very challenging guest. <laughs> so, can never find your equipment. <laughs> if you're tuning in on YouTube, Cam is wearing um he, what do you, what do you, what would you call that? It's like a little zoom, virtual zoom hat. I'm wearing a self-helpless shirt. I know, but you're also wearing this little zoom cap. That's like Beats the headphones. size of your thumb and you have the fucking game on in the background. I'm, of the living room. I'm not wearing that hat Delaney. It's a video filter. I'm not wearing it. Oh my, oh my gosh. Goose. He took a freaking shit on my yoga mat again. What a, what a way to start the show. Anyway. Let's get into it. Number one, what annoys you about each other and how do you deal? (laughs) I mean, the claws are really coming out for this one. We're getting down and dirty with it, babe. What annoys you about me? What annoys the shit out of you? Let's just have- You chew very loudly. Yeah, yeah, you do. Not, but you have that misophonia thing where you think everything is loud. Because I could be in another room with my mouth closed chewing and you're like, God, ah, can you keep it down? <laughs> can you keep it down in there? I don't know what I'm supposed to do about that. I cannot. Go- I, I, I heard one time I heard you eating ice cream upstairs how, I don't with know headphones on. I had headphones on. I don't know how that's possible. It's like I can't eat all my meals outside, you know, but. Yeah, how do you deal with that? Do you just put your put your volume? I, well, I, yeah, I don't. I just know it's an insane thing. <laughs> it's like a me thing. It's not a you thing. You probably do chew louder than most. Probably. But I'm annoyed by chewing in general. Yeah, I do chew loud. Like, I really enjoy my food. Like I forget everything. Well, you get to smacking. You sometimes you get to really smacking. <laughs> I know. I know. I really enjoy my food and like everything disappears. The people I'm around, I forget where I am. I really get into my meal. But I, do you get, do you have that issue with other sounds? Because you blast sound in your ears all day and sound is all around you. You put the TV on loud. You put your phone loud, yeah. your laptop, your computer. It's, it's specific blasting. noises. It's like, like, like crunching mm. or like scratchings or like water dripping, like constant noises that I can kind of faintly hear that I have to, like if I have to focus on, I can hear them that I'm like, that's all I can focus on. I don't know. I don't know how to explain it. I'm taking it. I know that there's people that think similarly to me and I know that they know exactly what I'm talking about. It is so so hard to take you seriously in this fucking Zoom cap. I'm telling you, you guys have to check it out on YouTube just for a second to see what I mean. But um, yeah, anyway, I wonder, I'm curious to know, we should do an episode on like misophonia and find out like the science behind it and see if there's any way to help you out. (laughs) You want to have a misophonia expert on the show, Cam? Do I want to? Yeah, wouldn't you want some hot tips for helping you out with this situation? No. So you can enjoy your wife more? No, I enjoy you plenty. Oh, oh, that was sweet. All right, let's talk about the shit that annoys me with you. (laughs) 
honestly, I feel like the biggest challenge. How long is this episode? Huh? How long is this episode? (laughs) I know about, we'll have three and a half hours just for my perspective about you. Um, No, I feel like we have talked about this. I, as far as like our habits don't really match up. Like I, I like to kind of keep things relatively tidy and you truly are not bothered by mess or trash or wrappers or like anything. And that's fine. Like you can really relax. Huh? I would, I don't like if it starts to smell. Yeah. But it doesn't ever start to smell because I clean it up. (laughs) Yeah. But I would clean it before it gets smelly. Well, that's good. At least you have some kind of freaking, you know, standard. Yeah, I'm good with chaos. I'm not good with like filth. Right, right. Yeah. I mean, it's really surprising how you can truly relax in any environment, no matter how messy, clean, loud, silent, whatever. I feel like there are certain things I truly need to be able to actually relax in my space. And the big one is just things being tidy, like kind of having a place. So that's the biggest thing that we, I feel like kind of our day-to-day things that probably bug us the most is you truly don't care. And I do. So it's kind of finding that happy medium of like what works, you know, for both of us and like compromising on both ends. All right. Next question. Are you ready? Babe, you ready? Oh yeah. All right. How did you meet? Um, so we met at work, Cam and I worked at the same company. I was technically his supervisor. What's up? (laughs) And luckily it worked out. Nobody lost their job. And then later on, um, my friend, our, our mutual friend, Patrick, uh, was looking for people to join the company softball team. And he asked both of us, you know, individually, and that's really where we got to know each other more is playing softball. And then, you know, having some text exchanges and meetups outside of the softball field. And that's, uh, <laughs> that's where the magic happened. <laughs> Don't be gross. <laughs> um, okay. What first drew you into each other? I don't think I've ever asked you that. What, what drew you to me? Was it just the fact that uh, I was single kind of looking around <laughs> being aggressive? <laughs> you wore cool pants. Oh my gosh, that's right. You always have cool tights on when you played, or whatever they're called. Leggings. Leggings, when you played softball. Oh my gosh, that is so funny. I Yeah, I would wear colorful leggings because I didn't have any actual real sports. And you were funny. That's cool. I like that. I approve. And you're funny. I approve this message. What drew me to you was that you were really good at softball. (laughs) That's the thing. Magic really sparked on the softball field for us. Um, I just thought you, I was like, oh, he can, he can hit the ball really far and he can throw shit and all that. And I thought that was attractive that you were, you were athletic and um, I liked your red hair and I liked how tall you were. Spoiler. I'm not that good. You're hyping me up. I mean, for a company softball league. I mean, I, yeah. Top notch. Yeah. I mean. For entertainment, com- entertainment company softball league. Yeah. That was pretty yeah. good. If we threw you into the, the major leagues, well, you wouldn't make it. Minor leagues, maybe a bench no. warmer, maybe a ball boy. No. What do they call it? A ball boy? Sure. Okay. Yeah. That's, <laughs> um, okay. Biggest challenge thus far in your relationship. I would say this is very, it relates to the habit thing that we talked about for me anyway, about, um, you know, coming up with like systems to keep the household running and tidy and like those normal day-to-day things, groceries, it, you know, it household toiletries, taking care of our two dogs, that kind of a thing is just like systematizing our household. What about you, babe? Biggest challenge. That's Keeping up with the system. <laughs> I'm not a system guy. Oh, Cam does not even keep a calendar. You do not write down notes. You never have a to-do list. You don't have a calendar. I don't know how you run your life. I, and here's the thing. If I was not, no, that does not work. Cam's pointing to his head like he just keeps it all up in here. No, he forgets it all the time. He's got to ask me. I have to I remember the important things. No, I got to text yes. reminders, email you, calendar invites. I mean, here's, here's the thing, though. If you couldn't rely on me for those types of things, how would you keep a system? How would you keep a calendar? 
What would I need to keep a calendar for? <laughs> just, I don't know, when, you, when you're going to like a party, when you get invited to a party or when you get invited to a wedding or just literally fucking anything. You go on a trip. How do you but keep? They're in my calendar. When I book a trip, it's already in my calendar. If I go to a wedding, it's in my calendar. How is it in your if calendar if, if you get an invite to a wedding? You got to put that shit in a calendar. Well, they sent me a save the date, and then like two months before the wedding, they sent me the invite. I don't need to save the date. What am I going to make plans seven months from now? I don't do that. (laughs) So you don't save the date, and then you just wait for the And then I get the the invite. And then when you get the invite, how do you remember it's on that date? Because if I go, I've purchased the tickets, and it's in my phone. (laughs) Okay, so you're, but what if it's a local wedding and you're not purchasing tickets, therefore it's not being linked to your calendar? How the fuck do you keep track of that? Well, then you have it written down. That's if what it's I'm local, <laughs> that's uh, what I'm saying. Without I wouldn't me, get invited to a local wedding. Let's just say thought experiment. Cam. Okay, let's do it. You get invited. You and I are not together. You are flying solo, you are a single lad. And you get invited to a local wedding where no flight is involved. How do you keep a calendar or make sure you show up to that wedding if you don't have anything written down or in oh the man, anything? I don't know. If like I had like a handheld computer in my hand or something, maybe I'd put it in there. So you would I'd put, put it in it my in phone. There. Yeah. So why don't you push it in your phone with me? Why is it all about, why do I have to remind you of shit if you know how to do it on your own? Well, because they're your activities. They're not, oh. I, why am I putting it in my calendar? You already have it in your calendar. We're married, baby. We're keeping calendars. I feel like this podcast episode is like the opposite of therapy. Like you and I are going to be divorced by the end of this fucking episode. <laughs> I mean, I don't get it. I mean... <laughs> You have a calendar for activities, so we have a calendar for activities. Any other things that need calendarizing, I'll take care of that. When we go on trips, I took care of that. Denver right. stuff, that was on me. I got it. I knew all the times. You didn't know shit about when we boarded the plane. You did know all the times for the flight. Right? Oh, how would you the... travel without me? Oh, yeah, no, I hate all that. Okay, all right. All right, well, we get We it. got a great system. We got some kind of a system. It's still, <laughs> it's, it's being refined over time. But yeah, that is the hardest part. <laughs> Systemizing things. And Cam says, keeping up with the system. A lot of the time I'll come in to the living room and be like, okay, Cam, here's the updated system. And I'll text him about it. Text him a little reminder and I'll tell him about it. I mean, some of it sticks pretty well. You got to admit. Well, three months later, it will be different days. That's right. That's right. With different activities. Well, babe, as our life evolves, we need to... Hey, man, I know you got to... Sometimes things come up. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. All right, next question. The best thing about being married in each of your opinions? We always have fun. Yeah, we do have a really good time. I mean, we, we truly don't do a whole lot outside of our home or neighborhood. And yet we're like having fun a lot. Imagine how much fun we would do, would have if you if we went on more dates. Imagine we'd have less fun. I don't think so. I think we have Maybe. a good time when we go out on dates. Let's not open that Pandora's box, though. It what? might not be worth it. What? It's always worth it. We always have a good time. It could really be a negative experience. Uh, but yeah, I think it's just the companionship, if you will. Best thing about being married in my opinion and um i feel a sense of like peace and security and you know know that i'm gonna have fun with somebody um yeah and it's made me look forward to the my future in a very different way like you and i get to build stuff together before you i was very much you know very independent and building the things that I wanted on my own. And it's cool to have a partner to where you're actually working towards mutual goals together and, and all that stuff. Cam, anything else that you love about being married? I get to spend every day with my best friend. Having to, or getting to. (laughs) Both. That was really sweet. (laughs) Oh, babe. That's I didn't say have, I said, I get. 
I don't know what you said, but I love it. I said I get to spend every day, you punk ass. Yeah, that's very sweet. I agree. I agree to that big time. Um, okay. How do you organize and split finances? Um, so Cam and I, pretty, we keep it pretty simple. We have a joint account for our, you know, kind of shared expenses and like rent, utilities, the cell phone, that kind of stuff. And then we each have our personal um, accounts as well, because, you know, we like to, we like to spend money in very different ways. And um, as long as our mutual stuff and our, you know, future stuff is taken care of, I truly don't give a shit how you spend your money, babe. And I know that, you know, like as long as we're taken care of as a team, the rest is whatever you want to do with it. It's also easier to keep um, gifts and surprises and stuff a secret with the joint or with the uh, individual accounts. What do you think? You wouldn't know about any surprises or I, you don't look at the joint account enough. I would be able to still sneak surprises past you. That's very true. I've never once looked at the joint account. (laughs) I've never once looked at any of those transactions. I can't. You know why? I'm burnt out because I have my business accounts that I have to look at. So the last thing I want to do is look at my fucking personal bullshit account. Your biggest fight. I had a hard, I don't, I have a hard time thinking about our biggest fight. Nothing, no one fight really stands out for me. I feel like when we, when we do fight, it all feels very same level type of fighting. I feel like we have a bickering kind of level where we get annoyed with each other. And then we have had like a handful of like not so nice fights, but there's no one that really sticks out. What about you? What about you? There was, there was the one time you got drunk on New Year's Eve early in our dating and you're like, I put in more effort than you. (laughs) And I was like, I don't call anybody. You, if you want to talk to me on the phone, you have to call me. I don't call anybody. (laughs) Oh my God. Was we, wasn't that the same night that you just wouldn't, you were just too. And I was, and then I remember just being like, I don't fucking call anybody. I don't call my mom. I don't make phone calls. Yeah, like, if I was, you want to talk to me, you have to put in the effort. <laughs> oh my god, I was I was hammered. That's right. I had hosted two shows. I was still doing stand up. I, I had hosted two shows in Santa Barbara for New Year's Eve at this like really cool theater. And um, as soon as the shows ended, we we drank quite a bit. Um, but was as, it- for you? I was drinking during the show. Oh right, right, right. right. The green room. Friend. Uh, yeah, you got some nice uh, green room service. Oh my God, that's isn't that the night that I showed my boobs for a meatball recipe? For a meatball, oh sure my did. gosh, and it comes full circle, people. And we never made the meatballs. <laughs> and we never made the meatballs. And now you're vegan. That is, you know what? That's on my bucket list though, because they have really great vegan meatballs that I could, uh, I could whip up that recipe. That recipe is forever grain, ingrained in my head because I would hope. I showed my boobs for it. You betcha. It's so funny because we have mentioned uh, that story several times on the podcast. And the first time was like when we first started the podcast and how crazy full circle. That's the, that's the night that it happened. But isn't that the night that we also decided to move in together? Like during that fight or after that fight? Yeah, probably. Cause it just, that's when it was like, it makes so much more sense. I, yes, I think that's the same night because what I, I think this, what was, what I was. Or talking- maybe that's when you decided in your mind, it made sense. I don't know when we had that conversation. I'm pretty sure. Probably we, shortly after. I'm pretty sure we talked about that because I think what this is, this, these were my concerns coming up. We were about six months into our relationship and, you know, we had already told each other, we loved each other, all that good stuff. Um, my concerns were that. And and keep in mind, I didn't know if I was going to stay doing stand up or not. Like, I didn't know yet. And so my concern was like, holy shit, like, how am I going to have um, a relation, a new relationship while performing all the time, being out all the time? When are we actually going to see each other? When, how are we going to communicate? How are we going to talk? All that kind of stuff. So all those fears were coming up for me, which is probably why I was upset of like, how, you know, we got to, we got to equally put an effort to communicate because I had figured, oh shit, this relationship's not going to last very long if we don't. And I think that's when we talked about moving in because honestly, moving in together 
I would see you every day, even if it was just for a little bit, even if it was just like, you know, on my way to a show and you coming home from work or whatever. And I think, I think we really talked about it, how like, yeah, it would be great for financial reasons to move in together, but also great for just actually being able to spend time with each other, just be more efficient all around. <laughs> I checked all the pro boxes. The only con was if you freaking bugged me so much, I had to kick you out. That's right. That's right. Luckily it never happened. And I, or if I bugged you so much, you teamed up with Jeff and kicked me out. That would yes. be a real twist. Yes, we did have a roommate at the time when we first moved in together for the first time. We were um, living with one of Cam's best friends as well. So yeah, that's interesting that that one of one of our biggest fights turned into like one of our best solutions. I feel like for our relationship. Sure. There you go, baby. Um, yeah, and I feel like uh, we've never been really been in a fight for more more than it i mean i don't think it's ever gone like a full 24 hours of us being in a fight i like to resolve shit quickly because it will stress me out if we don't i wouldn't know how to be angry that long yeah that I'm sounds just like, like I a lot of stress i was like let's forget a lot of the emotional stuff but like what could be the solution for this <laughs> um okay best vacation to yeah best vacation together we have had fun in many places um I think one of my favorite vacations with you is when we went to Portland. What about you? Yeah, Portland, or we just had fun in Denver. Yeah. We've yeah. turned we've turned both of the comedy specials of this podcast into two of our most favorite vacations. That's true. Yeah, it's been really nice. And I also enjoyed our um I've enjoyed our trip to Yosemite was fun. Yeah, Yosemite. And then there's this place that I love in San Luis Obispo um, called the mm. Sycamore Springs Resort. Loved that trip as well. So many, so many good ones. But I would say probably Portland was my favorite one just because of how like the day unfolded and it was very spontaneous and all that stuff. Um, how have you grown individually in your relationship and how have you grown as a couple? Cam. Cam. Oh. You're on a podcast, sir. I know. I have something Husband? in my tooth. Are you there? This is a po- this is a professional production, Cam Mulford. Yeah, but I'm not a professional production kind of guy. <laughs> no, no, you know. No. You gotta know who your talent is. Oh, true. What how have you grown individually? in our relationship and how do you feel like we've grown as a couple together? I think I've become more responsible. Mm, in what ways? Well, like I have like a schedule now and Yeah, I guess know, I'm so your scheduler. You don't no, have, a, no, you have no, a fucking no. person who runs a schedule. I have an internal schedule. Like yeah. I go to bed at a normal time. Mm. I wake up every day at the, around the same time. I'm pretty much up every day at 7.30 whether I want to continue going to bed or not is up to me but my body you know I go to bed I wake up I yeah. used to not do any of that when you and I first started dating you would sleep into like three or four o'clock in the afternoon three or four p.m well oh, I'd be up till four or five in the morning yeah you would sleep really late I'm like what am I when am I gonna see this fucking guy <laughs> yeah that's good okay so you feel like you have a schedule now like a routine you have a routine sure yeah that's a better word all right, cool. Um, how do you feel like we have grown together? I think we're better communicators. Yes, that's a great we one. I agree. Speak quick more quickly about how we are feeling. And well, I would kind of always said that. You speak you speak more quickly about how you're feeling, and I am better communicating how I'm feeling in the moment. I'm better at communicating in adverse interactions that aren't fights but are fight adjacent i totally agree i totally agree yes yeah i i feel like as a as a couple we have grown really really well together because i think we try to get to the root of why each of us are the way that we are. And so, you know, if I have a preference or you have a preference, we kind of figure out like, well, why is it 
that that is the situation. And I feel like it helps us connect that better. You know, like if I say, hey, I really prefer this because of, you know, my past or my experience or whatever, I feel like um, that understanding helps. You know what I mean? What I'm trying to say? You betcha. You betcha. Um, <laughs> okay, so the way that I feel like you've helped me grow as an individual is before I met you, I was, I mean, huge workaholic, always on the go, did not spend much time uh, at home. I was always out. I was always busy. And then you and I started dating and that changed a lot of things for me because I wanted to be home more and I wanted to be less busy. And that is, I mean, the biggest reason is because of you. I wanted to spend time with you. And that was the first time I felt like I had a reason not to be out all the time, busy all the time, everywhere, all over the place. Um, and so, yeah, that it gave me a different perspective on what I wanted my future to look like. So, so basically you can thank uh, Cam for killing my comedy career. <laughs> I'm kidding. You were very supportive of that too. Like you, you, you didn't care if I, if I kept going or pivoted or whatever you were very supportive i don't know i am an influential un i am an uninfluential voice i don't want to make any influence on a decision yeah well i think you just let me figure shit out but that was not always the case like with um you know prior relationships and stuff like you know there was a lot of opinions about what i should do or shouldn't do you know career wise or whatever and that was like the I, I feel like it was really refreshing that you were just like yeah i mean whatever you want to do i'll be here <laughs> um so yeah that was that was big for me and i think um you have forced me to relax like seeing the way that you spend your day to day and the way that you do things has made me realize like, oh, not everybody is busy all the time, doing shit all the time, working themselves, you know, to the bone. And so when we first started living together and like after that, um, I really started making more changes and like making more time for fun and um, downtime and all that stuff. And I really had not done that much prior. Not a relationship question, but do you think you'll ever bring Dick Spy Delaney back? <laughs> Hell yeah. That's so funny. I always joke all the time that uh, Dick Spy Delaney will be like my retirement plan. Like I'll, I'll whip that out when I'm like 85 and I'm like, you thought I was done. I'm back, bitches. Order your dicks. Um, yeah. So there's no, there's, there's no real plans to bring it, bring it back, but there is a loose future vision that I think would actually be very hilarious um, to, you know, potentially have that at some point, but that would be very, very far down the road. So how, when, when I started, when I started Dick Spy Delaney for real, like turned it into a real business, we were living together, right? Already. Yeah. We, we were living together alone. Yeah. I, for no, six months. I, I started it when we when we lived with Jeff because I remember needing to clear out three of the drawers in the living room to store my inventory, oh. my mugs, my wrapping paper. Um, I just thought it's just so crazy because I just remember like storing things in drawers and painting the mugs at the coffee table and the kitchen table and baking them in the oven and like all these different crazy things in such a small shared space. Um, that's so, it's just so weird to think about the, how that everything evolved. Um, what is your biggest goal as a couple for the future? I feel like each of us have some kind of things on our bucket list that we'd like to do more like places we like to visit. But for me, I just, um, I just want us both to continue to, you know, be happy as happy as possible with our day to day. So if at some point that shifts for some reason, whether it's work related or something else, um, I would want to make sure that we tend to that and do whatever we need to do to, you know, 
keep each other happy. How do you feel, babe? What's your biggest goal? You stole my answer. Oh, happiness. I was going to say, oh, I'm not a goal guy. Right. I don't do goal. Who'd have thunk the guy without a calendar doesn't do goals either. Very I just want to be ha- I just want to continue to be happy. Yeah. I don't want to feel stuck. I want to continue to be happy. And if we are able to go to all of the places we have on our list, then I think we'll be, you know, we're doing fine in other areas. Yeah. But I don't have like, I want to have this kind of thing and this thing. I don't. Yeah. I don't know. I just live. I just try to be happy. I don't think about it. Yeah. I think more of our goals are based on like trips and dates and, and some travel and stuff. But I would say a big goal of mine is to have a nice big bathtub. bathtub. I need a nice big I bathtub. Want a big old bathtub. <laughs> that is a big goal. That is a big dream goal of mine. A nice tub. I want to, I would love to have like a, a large backyard for the boys. We can't, we can't stay at the Airbnb. It doesn't have a big tub. Yeah, no, I I mean, this is the thing. If I'm staying somewhere, I want to have a bathtub because, I mean, we have a bathtub at home, but it's very small. Um, And I spend a lot of time in in the bath. So I think it'd be a great investment for my happiness. And remember, it's all about happiness, babe. That's the goal. You bet. (laughs) But we'll live in a a shack with a $4 million tub. Yeah, perfect. Um, I would say that more tangible things, bathtub for me a backyard for the boys like a big one and then what you want like a nice you want like a way bigger kitchen like a huge kitchen right isn't that on your goal well i you know hashtag goal list who knows i i say i'd I'd like to start cooking more and maybe having like a real fucking nice kitchen would get me there but (laughs) that's probably just you know the wanderlust speaking I wouldn't fucking cook. I'd get this big, nice kitchen, and then I'd be like, and I've never used it once. (laughs) Yeah, we are not cookers. We have really discovered that about ourselves. Um, Okay. What are you excited about right now, Cam? What are you excited about, whether it's personally or together as a a team of two? Oh, basically. Well, as you can see, this team sucks butt, so I'm not excited about that. Cubs. Okay. I'm talking about the Cubs. They suck. Not happy. Yeah. So you're not excited about that. So no. Who are you excited about? Are you excited uh, about baseball or fantasy sports or whatever the hell you're up to with your boyfriend? Fantasy's tough. I'm. It's tough right now for me. So I don't know if I'm excited. I'm more nervous than I feel like. Uh, like you know, Dale from Step Brothers, the manager, fantasy mm-hmm. baseball team. You something exciting happened for you, oh. Tongo. You became a Cub season ticket holder. Oh yeah, that was exciting. And then they sucked, so you know. <laughs> but you had, you said that you had been waiting. You'd been on that list for how many years? Or you'd been wanting to do that for a long eight, time? At least eight. Eight years? Holy shit! So what year is it? Twenty twenty two. I moved here in twenty sixteen, so I'm signed up before I move. What? At least, yeah. It had to have been eight years. You don't have to reapply every year, right? You just, you just. If I don't renew next year, I have to sign back up again and then wait on the waiting list. Oh my God. But I, I, if I, I can renew for the rest of my life and I'll never, I feel like, oh, you know, if I move, if we move back and I upgrade, I can move up there. I'll never do that. Yeah. Uh, Well, that's an exciting thing that's happened for you. We're going to plan our honeymoon. That'll be fun. Very excited about planning our honeymoon. Luckily, Ireland was on both of our kind of top lists of places we wanted to visit. And my grandpa, who recently passed um, uh, in the fall, he he grew up, he was born in Dublin and his childhood home is now a Hilton hotel. So we're actually going to be staying at that hotel um, for a few nights when we go there. And we're going to be actually, you know, he's, before he before he passed away, he told us to stay on the second floor because apparently the second floor is where he was born in his home. So yeah, that's going to be a really interesting trip. I'm I'm really excited to to go. I think it'll be very deep. Um, yes, and then I'm also just very excited about um, we moved into our new place not too long ago and I'm still just kind of decorating it getting it together and then things that I'm excited about individually as well as just um 
my business, like my business is growing and I'm really excited. And Cam sees how excited I get because it's just like this, it's like a never ending creative art project is how I feel like things, you know, there's always adjustments. There's always something new to do. Um, so I've just been really, really enjoying that a lot and things are shifting in a very exciting way. So yeah, excited about that. Um, okay. What are, who are both of your celebrity crushes? Go ahead, Cam. Me first or you first? I mean, every, I think if, well, if, if people have been tuning in for a while, people know who mine is. Jack Black. Top, top number one. Jack Black. Cam? I have two. All right. Who are your top two? Then I'll give my second. Uh, uh, they're comedians. Kelsey Cook and Tyler, Taylor <laughs> Tomlinson. Do you know them? Uh, that's why I married you. That is very well, funny. I had to, that was my end. <laughs> Babe, that was good. I didn't see that one coming. Yeah. I know that who the real in top two are. And I'm like, oh. Yeah, that was good. Not going to end. Um, probably Taylor Swift. Yeah. And then whatever, you know. Blake Lyle, whatever. right? Yeah, but, you know. You fall in love. I fall in love so easy. <laughs> I knew Taylor Swift it changes. Always, Taylor Swift has always been your number one, and Jack Black's always been my, my number one. Yeah, and then two is kind of you know the flavor of the year. Yeah, I feel there's like too many. There's so many pretty people out there. Mm-hmm. And you're married to one of them, baby. <laughs> I know. Jeez, please. Uh, yeah, no, those are the top ones. I mean, the other ones in my top, they're. I mean, oh gosh, I, there's too many. There's too many. We'll just go with the top, the top one for now. Um, all right, this is this is our, our last question. What are each of your personal views on death? We'll end it with something light, babe. What are you? <laughs> okay, I think about death literally every day, multiple times a day. It's always in the back of my head. At least once a day, I have a little teeny tiny um, existential crisis slash panic attack. But internally, I snap out of it within a few seconds, but it happens on a daily basis for me. And when I think about death, it motivates me to do what I want to do with my life. So it scares me for a few seconds and then it motivates me and it gives me the courage to do whatever I might be scared about doing that day or whatever. But yeah, that I think about it literally all the time. It's constant. Cam, what are you, how do you feel about death? What's your relationship with death? Well, the fun insight into me as a kid is it was like all I thought about. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I, uh, I used to have this thing where I would touch things and then, you know, I touched a po- I touched a mushroom once. My cousin said it's poisonous. It wasn't. It wasn't. And then I freaked out. And I said, if I touch my shoe and then I lick my finger, you know, am I going to die? And my dad was like, don't touch your shoe. And I was like, okay, but you know, what if I do? And then I lick my finger. And then he goes, don't lick your finger. I go, yeah, but if I do, am I going to die? Yeah. And then that continued for, you know, just a normal two to three years. Yeah. Anything. Touch garbage, poop, whatever it was. Am I going to die? So maybe I don't think about death anymore because of that, but I don't really think about it at all. I know. I'm shocked by it. Well, I mean, I'll you... think about it like in the, you know, if I'm driving in the car, I'd be like, oh, that would suck. And then I'd be dead. And then I can't think anymore. So what's there to worry about? Like, I'm worried about something that once it happens. Yeah. I yeah. can't be worried anymore. I'll be dead. Right. So, so yeah, why no. am I worried about it? Oh, see, I, like I... I'm worried about breaking my leg you know, falling off a ladder because I could fall off a ladder and then break my leg and then have to live with a broken leg. I'm not worried about falling off a ladder and dying because if I die, I'll be dead. Like, I can't be worried about that. I'll be dead. I wish that's how I felt, but that freaks me out more is the fact that, okay, well, that's interesting because I feel like we've switched places because as a kid, I never thought about this stuff and you were a really anxious kid always thinking about death and now that we're adults, I'm always thinking about it and you're like, whatever. But I feel like the fact that I don't know when it's going to happen and I don't know what it's going to feel like, 
I don't know what goes on afterwards. That freaks me out and frankly pisses me off because I like knowing shit. I like planning things. I like experimenting with things. And the fact that I literally don't know will, I mean, it will eat me until the end of time. And the fact that you're just like, yeah, you can't, you can't control it because when it happens, you're, you won't be in control. I'm like, yeah, but how can I control it from not happening? <laughs> yeah, but like it's going to happen. I know, but how can I make sure it doesn't happen in a scary way and it just happens way, way down the road? Oh, I just want to make sure that I die when I'm 99 and it's the very second I feel like I'm too old to live. That's how you want to live. Yeah. Exactly. How do I keep myself alive long enough to do all the shit I want to do? And you like, that's the mystery of life. Do you ever think about that? Like if no, do you, so you feel like, Oh, I'm very fulfilled. And if it happened, you know, no regrets or no things that I wanted to check off my list. Can't check anything off my list. I'd be dead. I feel like we're never going to see eye to eye on how we how we approach the death topic. I feel like you and I are very opposite in a lot of ways, but also very similar in obviously ways that are important. Um, but I feel like this is it's good that we kind of have that balance with that topic, I feel like, because you can calm me down and I can encourage you to, you know, do fun shit. You know what I mean? All right, babe. I totally forgot to ask you what your favorite or least favorite quote is at the top of the podcast. So let's go ahead and end it on that note. What is your favorite or least favorite quote? Favorite or least favorite? Favorite or your least favorite, or you could do Mm. one of each. You could have a favorite and a least favorite. I don't really have, I don't really have like, this is a quote I live by, but I like that Oscar Wilde quote, be yourself, but everyone else is or well, be yourself. Everyone else is already taken. Yeah, that's a great one. Or it's like, don't you know? But I, and then I don't like you miss a hundred percent of shots you don't take. <laughs> okay, it's like me. duh. <laughs> Why do you hate that quote? Because duh. <laughs> Obviously, if you don't take the shot, you. But like, you don't miss the shot because you don't like. Like fundamentally, the quote doesn't work either. Because, like, you don't miss the shot if you don't take the shot. The shot was never attempted, so it can't be missed. And on that note, everybody, Cam, thanks for being here. And uh, Tiny Hat. Tiny Hat, thanks for being here. And we'll see you soon. All right. There it is. What an episode. I mean, such an incredible, remarkable guest, that guy. I mean, professional polished. Um, He even trimmed his beard for this interview, very obviously. Um, Just everything top notch. Um, But yeah, no, seriously, thanks to Cam for joining me. And thank you to all of you for, you know, uh, submitting questions and all that good stuff. We do have an iTunes review of the episode. It says, Awesome. Found this podcast a few weeks ago, working on catching up. And I listened to you ladies all day long while I'm at work. I love it. Thank you so much for all the laughs and knowledge that was left by V wills nine, two, three. I hope I'm not messing that name up. Thank you so much for leaving that. Uh, we really, really appreciate it. If you want to leave us a uh, rating review, you can head over to iTunes and it might get read on the show. And then, um, Cam and I actually also did an episode together on my other podcast, aficionado, the minimalist business podcast. So if you're an entrepreneur, business owner, contractor, and you are looking to scale your business while also freeing up your time, um, you can head over to delaneyfisher.com. It's a private podcast, but it is completely free and you can sign up to get it delivered right to your inbox. And Cam and I actually talked about, um, we, we surveyed the community over there and we talked all about um, being in a marriage where one person is an entrepreneur and one person is not an entrepreneur and how we, you know, how that dynamic really is and the challenges, the benefits, all that good stuff. So feel free to check out um, that episode and any other episodes that interest you at delaneyfisher.com. Thank you so much for being here and we'll talk to you soon. 
Thank you so much for listening to the Self Helpless Podcast. You can find our Patreon community, merch, and our individual work at selfhelplesspodcast.com. We'd be thrilled if you shared this episode with a friend or feel free to post it on Instagram and tag at selfhelplesspodcast so we can repost you and say thank you. Thank you.